Hello everybody, this is our first asynchronous lecture and our second lecture in total. I'll give you a review of the previous session and then we start a new topic. In the previous session, I defined a process and identified three process types. Then I gave you a general perspective of the objective of this course, which are three different steps basically. First is process modeling. And process modeling is basically representation of a process with mathematical equations. And they can be done for two different states of the process, a steady state and transient state. Once we have these mathematical equations, next is to solve them using exact methods or numerical methods. Now let's say we have an equation for the transient state of a system. Then we can get into process dynamics, which is the response of the system to changes or disturbances normally with respect to the time. For example, let's say we have a variable or an input variable that varies with time like this step function. Then how does the output of the system or the response of the system vary with time? And finding this is part of process dynamic. Now that we find this, our next goal is to basically control the process so that we can maintain a process at the desired operating conditions. Let's say our desired operating our output condition is this uniform level. But we know a small change in the input variable may result in a large fluctuation. So to solve this, we have to come up with a, a way to control the system so that our, at least our fluctuation with, with respect to the time are within an acceptable range. Now, let's start the, the topic of this session, which is process modeling. There are three different types for process modeling, theoretical, empirical, and semi-empirical. For this course, we will um, mostly use theoretical modeling, which is based on principal laws, something like Newton's law or ideal gas law, which relate any physical or chemical phenomena <clears throat> to some uh, sort of mathematical equations. There is also empirical modeling, which is based on experimental data. So you have to obtain a lot of data points and then start uh, care fitting these data points to come up with a correlation for the desired parameter. And finally, there is semi-empirical method, which is based on a combination of theoretical models and experimental data. But as I said, in this course, we will mostly use theoretical modeling, which is based on conservation laws. We can write a general form of conservation law for an arbitrary property of the system. Let's call it phi. So if my system consists of a control volume, the rate of phi into the system minus the rate of phi out of the system plus the rate of production or generation of phi within the system minus the rate of consumption of phi within the system defines the rate of accumulation of phi which is basically d phi over dt or time so this is the general form of conservation law and we will apply this to different properties of system including mass component momentum or energy next okay let's now drive the conservation of mass for that we have to set phi equals to mass and we had for the general uh, form of conservation law we had the rate of accumulation of a certain property which is in this case mass is equal to rate of mass into our system 
minus rate of mass out of our system plus rate of mass production minus rate of mass consumption and we know that we cannot produce or consume mass so these two last terms are zero and we are left with rate of accumulation of mass so just to make it uh, more understandable i give you this example of blending tank with an agitator in the middle and we have two input streams into the tank one at the flow rate of w1 and the other one at the flow rate of w2 and these are mass flow rates there's a level of liquid within the tank and i intentionally put the discharge of the tank at an elevated location and i assume that it is large enough that can handle the two input streams so it means that for now the amount of liquid within the tank is constant so if I rate if I um, convert this into mathematical form rate of accumulation of mass is a derivative of ma mass with respect to time dmdt rate of mass into the tank and I assume this tank is my basically control volume. Is W1 plus W2 a rate of mass into the tank minus W which is rate of mass out of tank. So um, as I said in the First, we assume in the case that uh, discharge is at elevated uh, location, it's an overflow and it's large enough to handle the two input streams. So in that case, the amount of liquid within the tank stays the same because whatever comes in goes out. And we can assume that uh, basically we don't have any accumulation of mass within the tank. So the equation becomes zero equals to w1 plus w2 minus w which is basically our mass conservation in a steady state but if i go ahead and delete this and put it uh, down below and I add a valve in here so I can throttle the flow so there is a valve and with this valve I can play with the basically opening uh, of the orifice and I can manipulate the outlet of the system and with that I can either accumulate some mass within this tank or let the amount of liquid within the tank to reduce so in that case, we have the derivative of mass with respect to the time. And if I replace it with the density of liquid times the volume of uh, liquid within the tank, I will have d rho times v divided by, divided by t dt or derivative of rho v uh, with respect to time is w1 plus w2 minus w and now i can make my first assumption here which is basically rho is constant and this is not a bad assumption for liquids because they are in incompressible so i can take the rho out of the derivative and i'm left with derivative of volume within the tank and the right hand side stays as is so this is the conservation of mass in the transient 
situation of the system. Now we can write down the conservation of component But for that, I have to adjust the example slightly. So I will have the same step tank for blending, but at the inlet, instead of having a pure liquid, I will have a mixture of component A and B. The flow rate will be still W1, and the mass fraction of component a is x1 at the stream 2 i will have the flow rate of w2 and the mass fraction of component a is x2 <coughs> then the agitator will be here and then at the outlet the flow rate will be w and the mass fraction will be x so now i have to make Another assumption in here, which is basically ideal blending within the tank. And it means that everywhere within the tank, the mass fraction of component A will be uniform because the blending is uh, ideal. So the mass fraction within the tank and the mass fraction at the discharge will be the same, X. So with that, I can start writing the conservation of component and if you remember we had the accumulation of component or accumulation of any property in this case component so i have d over dt of component within the tank which is total mass within the tank times the mass fraction of component a equals to amount of component that enters the tank or the rate of component into the tank which is x1 w1 plus x2 w2 and rate of component out of the tank which is x w and remember we have production of component and consumption of component for mass these two terms they were zero but here we may have some chemical reactions that produces a component or consumes a component so we will we may have uh, these terms in future but as of now this is just pure blending there is no uh, reaction so those two terms will be zero then i can uh, even make it simpler if i assume again that rho is constant for this and basically the reason for that could be if the effect of uh, mass fraction of component on the density is negligible, we can assume that rho is everywhere is constant. <coughs> so we can replace mass by rho density times volume. And then in that case, because rho is constant, we can factor it out. So we will have dv x dt and the right hand side will be the same x1 w1 plus x2 w2 minus x w and now i can use the chain rule to split this term so i can write rho v dx dt plus rho x dv dt equals x1 w1 plus x2 w2 minus x w <coughs> and if you look at this component this is basically the left hand side of our conservation of uh, basically mass so we can replace it with the right hand side and uh, that's why we will have rho v dx dt plus x times w1 plus w2 minus 
w is equal to x1 w1 plus x2 w2 minus xw <coughs> and if you rearrange this you will have dx over dt is equal to w1 over rho v times x1 minus x plus w2 over rho v times x2 minus x and this will be the final form of component conservation of com conservation of component we can write the conservation of mass in a similar format so it will be dv over dt is equal to 1 over rho times w1 plus w2 minus w and basically with these two equations we define or we model the transient or unsteady state of the system so with this we can conclude this session i will drive the conservation of energy in the next lecture and then we will have another example in the next lecture which includes the application of conservation of energy